I received this book from my loving wife. Now, I am going to build a full size one, but this episode, we're just going to shrink it down a little. We're going to build half scale. So I've been through the book, I've copied out all the relevant measurements, half them, and well, we'll go from there. My table's flat enough and square enough to be a chassis table, so let's get on with it. gone over, double checked all the pieces, they're all the right length, right size, uh, the right angles on the ends and they're ready to go. So I'll put a center line down the middle of the table. I think the first step is to put together the, the nose piece. So I'll do that now and we'll go from there. That's the basic frame, exactly the same as the book. I'm going to change this front piece, just have one bar through and then the uprights up for the front suspension to mount to. Now, we made this last week. It's going across the back there. That's the rear body work. Now, I'm going to make a new bar for here that actually curves back to be the seat back. Yes a seat. And the reason you need somewhere to sit is because everything's more fun with the motor.
the chassis mostly together how it's got to be. The steering shaft needs to come through here. I know I need about this much clearance here for the uni joint but I don't have the components so I can't finalize this yet but in order to keep the project going I'm just going to tack this into place here so then I can set up the motor and know that I've got room for my steering later on so I'll glue that in and we'll go from there oh never put a tack weld where you can't get a grinder something I learnt when I was an apprentice alright so that's tacked into place it's going to push the motor up a little bit higher but we'll have to deal with that later when we build the bonnet let's put a motor in it so as you can see it's kind of hitting so what I think I might do is just move the, the steering shaft across this way at least 50 millimeters that'll let the whole motor sit down 30 mil more uh, the only thing that would cause an issue with is the steering setup where the tie rod ends will be unequal which something this sort of size it probably won't worry it you won't notice a difference I'm going to move this out of the way and then all right so I've got the motor in the position I want it there's about two millimeters clearance under that drain plug there which is exactly what I want the engine sitting as low as possible I've got around 10 millimeters clearance on the engine to the to the frame at all the positions so I'll make sure that the output shaft is square to the chassis and then start working out some motor mounts for the engine mounts of this you have these two spots here normally that's mounted on the main bar of the motorbike but I don't have that so I'm going to use some of these bends I've made up pick up the two points I've got two of those and then there'll be a T-bar going across and picking up the chassis rail on each side so it should be simple these three main pieces made for the for the engine mounts and they're fairly simple one up each side one of them had to have a 10 mil packer built into it because for some reason the engine mounts aren't the same size top and bottom We've got some long bolts go through the lot a couple of nylocks that and then this top bar I want to get the wiring out of the way we'll go through here somewhere there I just need to tweak it a little bit make sure ends are right There we have it. Motor mount's done. All right, so that's it for this week. We've got the mainframe finished, engine's mounted. Next week will be 
exhaust, welding the frame out. Looking forward to it. So, from Chad Cog and me, goodbye. And as always, customize everything. Hey, Chad Cog. Ram, ram.